Hey what's up guys, my name is The Cherno, and welcome to the first episode of a brand new series. In this series we'll be taking a look at creating Flappy Bird, a popular mobile game that should be simple enough to make. Our end result will look something like what you're seeing right now. Let's talk a bit about the technology behind the game we'll be making. Firstly, this won't be a mobile game. We'll be making a desktop version of Flappy Bird which will be cross-platform. We'll be using Java, an object-oriented programming language that supports really fast development, at least compared to something like C++. Inside Java we'll be using OpenGL. OpenGL is a graphics specification which is already integrated into your graphics card. I recommend updating your graphics drivers to ensure you've got a modern version of OpenGL. OpenGL is written in C, so we need a way to access that inside Java. Out of the many available libraries out there, we'll be using LWJGL, which stands for Lightweight Java Game Library. In addition to letting us call OpenGL from inside Java, LWJGL provides a nice interface for input devices. Even though we're using LWJGL, don't worry. LWJGL simply allows us to call the OpenGL code, which is written in C, from inside Java, making it no different than if we use C to write the application, since the graphics part of it effectively is written in C. Finally, we'll be using OpenGL 3.3 as the minimum version. The current stable release of OpenGL as of right now is 4.4, however OpenGL 4 is generally not supported in graphics cards released earlier than 2010. For example, the NVIDIA GeForce 300 series only supports OpenGL 3.3 and lower. Because of this, there's really no point in us exclusively using OpenGL 4 to make this game, since we're essentially limiting our game to run only on graphics cards released within the last four years. OpenGL 3.3 sets us back to around 2006, since most graphics cards from that era now have drivers which allow them to run OpenGL 3.3. Sure, we miss out on a few neat features from OpenGL 4, but there are ways to work around that. The way we're going to write the code is modern practice, however. Basically the way you would make this kind of game right now, in 2014. We'll get more into that as the series goes on. In this first episode, we'll be covering everything you need to do to set up the environment in which we'll make this game. There are three main ingredients, Java, Eclipse, and LWJGL. Check out the description below for a link to download Java. You'll want the latest version of the JDK, the Java Development Kit. If you think you might already have Java installed, you can check by opening a command prompt on Windows by pressing Windows key R and typing in CMD and hitting enter. If you're on Mac or Linux, simply open the terminal. Once that opens, type in Java hyphen version and hit enter. If your version is lower than 1.8, I'd recommend following along and downloading the latest version. Make sure you accept the agreement and download the appropriate version for your platform. Once downloaded, follow the prompts and install it. Next, we have Eclipse. Once again, check the description for a link. I'll be using Eclipse 4.4, codenamed Luna, for this series. Eclipse doesn't have an installer, simply unzip and place the main folder in a directory of your choice. I'll be placing it in a dedicated folder for this series. Once it's extracted, that's it, Eclipse is ready to use. Lastly, we'll need LWJGL, whose link is also in the description. Click on the latest version and go ahead and download it. As you can see, I'll be using 2.9.1 for this series. Once downloaded, simply extract it into a directory. I'll be placing it in our Flappy Bird folder, together with Eclipse. You'll also want to make one final folder here, called Workspace. This will contain our Eclipse workspace for this project. Basically, it'll contain our actual code, any resources, and the resulting binaries. Now let's walk through setting up Eclipse. Firstly, open it. If this is your first time opening Eclipse, you'll be asked to select a workspace. Go ahead and point it to the workspace folder we just made, and check Use This as the default. Once Eclipse opens, let's make a few changes to how it works. These changes aren't necessary, simply me setting up my workspace the way I like it. Let's open the Navigator by hitting Window, Show View, and Navigator. I prefer this over the Package Explorer because it more or less shows our hierarchy of folders. Next we'll hit Window, then Preferences. Under Java and Code Style, we'll click Organize Imports. Here we'll change the number of static imports needed to 1. We'll see this in action later. Next we'll click on Formatter and edit. This refers to how Eclipse formats our code. We'll have to give this profile a new name, so I usually just append modified. Under control statements, I'm going to change the way simple if and else statements are formatted by essentially keeping them on the same line. Under line wrapping, I'll make sure that we have enough line width to work with without Eclipse wrapping it. Finally, under comments, I'll prevent Eclipse from formatting block comments and increase the line width here as well. That's it. We're done. Now let's go ahead and make our Flappy Bird project. Click File, New, and Java Project. I'm going to call this project Flappy. Make sure you're using a Java SE execution environment, the latest version you've got. As you can see, I'll be using 1.8 for this series. Once created, we need to link LWJGL to our project. Right click on the project and click Properties. Then, head over to the Java build path. 
Under the Libraries tab, I'll click on Add External Jars, and then navigate to our LWJGL folder. The only jar we'll need to add is either the LWJGL.jar, or the LWJGL-debug.jar. This is a simple project, so we won't be needing the extra debugging features, so I'll add the former. LWJGL uses some C code to interact with OpenGL, so we'll have to point Java to the location of that code. We can do that by expanding LWJGL, clicking on Native Library Location, then Edit, and finally pasting in the location path. This is under the Native folder. We're using Windows, but you should choose the platform you're developing on. Let's grab that path and paste it in. Optionally, you could have clicked on External Folder and found it. That's it, you're done. We're now ready to make Flappy Bird. If something didn't make sense in this episode, or something went wrong for you, please visit my forums and make a post under the Flappy Bird section. Someone will definitely help you out there. Don't forget to like the video if you enjoyed it, and I'll see you guys next time with episode 2, where we'll make the display. Goodbye.